Yes, it's true. Southern California foreclosures are increasing and it's actually getting interesting out there for investors. We are going to run through our data and tell you why we're incredibly frustrated and probably not using these numbers anymore. We're going to show you where we're going to get our numbers from in the future. Elon Musk has been foreclosing on Gene Wilder's former home. Next week, it gets very interesting. You're going to want to see this update. It's time for the Southern California foreclosure report. Let's dive into the data. Probably not going to be using this data much longer. We're going to have to find another source because we're not entirely happy about the numbers. And, and it's not because the numbers were not happy where they're headed. It's that we're getting some inaccurate data. And uh, stick around. I'm going to show you a number that's clearly inaccurate. Notices of default. Looking at October's going back to 2015. What do you see uh, when you take a quick look? Well, you can see that for 2024, we have an increase in the notices of default. And it doesn't look like more normal years. We're actually above that for every county. That's important. I do believe the numbers are accurate enough for that trend. Now we're not at 2011 levels for notices of default. That was a bigger time. It's about as far back as we can go with the ICE data that we're using. It was even higher in the years before 2011. But you can see that we are heading on an upward trajectory Four notices of default, the first phase of foreclosure. Moving into the next phase, notices of trustee sale. We were seeing that the notices of default have been going up, but it's taking, it has taken some time for that to trickle in to that second phase, the notice of trustee sale, and we're seeing it now. Someone misses a payment, and 120 days later, the notice of default can be filed. 90 days later, notice of trustee sale. 21 days later, you can have the trustee sale. And usually it takes much longer than that, but that's as fast as it can go. And we're gonna show you in this video, one foreclosure that's actually moving that fast. We're seeing now that some folks are going from the notice of default into this next phase, notice of trustee sale. Where do they head next? They head next to the auction and potentially become REO or purchased by third party. And there are going to be some changes in 2025 laws related to the foreclosure process. So make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss that. And for context, bringing in 2011 crazy days, you can see many more notices of trustee sale at that point in time. Don't forget, we also had a lot more inventory at that point in time. Standard inventory, short sales, bank owned homes and these uh, homes theoretically coming on the market and nobody had equity at that point in time everybody upside down moving into areos and here it is san Berdu. look at that massive spike that we had in 2022 for the number of properties going back to the bank that's not accurate there's no way we had that many go back to the bank in october of 2022 we double checked the numbers michelle who runs the numbers i ran the numbers it is an error in the data. There's nothing we can do about it. And that's why I'm frustrated and we're probably gonna have to find a new resource for numbers because we can't be having inaccuracies like this. Not huge numbers, but up when you compare them to the years when we had the foreclosure moratorium. And that's obvious that we wouldn't have as many properties going all the way through the foreclosure process because they stopped the foreclosures. And that's why that 57 is inaccurate as well. We can see that we are still below more normal years for foreclosures. And you can also see how they continue to slowly decrease over time it's until we hit 2020 when the foreclosure moratorium was put in place because of COVID, but nowhere near where it was during crazier days. Thousands of homes per month going back to the bank in Los Angeles County. Just crazy numbers. And don't forget, they didn't all go back to the bank. Some were still purchased by a third party. So that's crazy to see those levels of inventory. We are way down low, but that doesn't mean it's not worth tracking these numbers because there may still be a deal in here for you. You don't need 1300 properties going back to the bank. You just need the right one that's going back to the bank. It's time to revisit the property that Elon Musk is foreclosing on, which was Gene Wilder's former house. We talked about it when the property was first foreclosed on and now things have Continue to move forward on that. We're going to show you exactly where it is in the foreclosure process. But look at what we have here. We have a dramatic price reduction, about a $3.5 million price reduction in order to get an offer. And it just happened last week. Now, why would they do that? Well, there's a good reason because the foreclosure process has been moving along quickly and the foreclosure sale has been scheduled. That's why they've given it a price reduction as an attempt to find someone to buy it before it goes to sale. 
and we can see that as of shooting this video, which is just before Thanksgiving, next week this will be going to trustee sale. So show up with your cashier's checks and be ready to buy next week and you'll be able to potentially buy this property or you can go ahead and put your $9.5 million offer in to the current listing agent. Oh, and what happens when a property is foreclosed on and there's an active listing? Well, in this case, that cancels the active listing. Once the property is foreclosed on, the seller and that listing agent can no longer work to bring an offer in. So that is the latest and greatest on Elon Musk foreclosing on Gene Wilder's former home. It looks like it's gonna happen next week. And while we're here on foreclosure.com, which we have a link below so you can sign up, let's talk about data. Like I mentioned, there do seem to be in discrepancies in the numbers for the other data we've been pulling from ICE. So now what I'm probably going to lean on is go into a resource like foreclosure.com. According to foreclosure.com in Los Angeles County, we have about 4,300 properties in pre-foreclosure. By pre-foreclosure, they mean notice of default or notice of sale has been filed. Anything before the foreclosure date is pre-foreclosure. After that date, then it would be REO or owned by a third party and SB 1079 would take over as well for most of these. Watch my video if you don't know what that means. But I recommend signing up so that you can track these foreclosures. 4,300 properties that are behind on payments in LA, that's definitely trackable data. Orange County has about 900 that are trackable. Riverside, 1,537. San Berdu, we've got about 1,350. San Diego, just over 1,000. So there is data to be tracking, and this is probably more relevant to you as an investor than just looking at my handy dandy charts. This is where the rubber meets the road. And here's one in San Diego. The auction is December 30th. So you can start to track these properties and be able to take a run at them if it's something that it fits into your investment criteria. Don't forget to click that foreclosure.com link below. And while you're there, subscribe to our free weekly email newsletter. We have some exciting content coming for next year for foreclosures in Southern California. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates. And we can't wait to hear from you. Did you know that tenants have a superpower when it comes to foreclosure? We talk about that in this video right here.